the boxes, departed the Virgin Islands, destined for a uh, Miami address. We did some examinations on the packages, and during the x-rays, determined some anomalies that were inside. So it's sealed up. Let's see if I can open it up. Inside, there's cake and frosting, and it smells like carrot cake. Yep. Appears to be cocaine. They have their emblem to identify which organization it belongs to, where it's going. So we'll do the next one. It has the same narcotics inside. The same emblem. So it looks like it comes from the same drug trafficking organization. This is unique. Since I have been here in Miami, I have not seen anything smuggled in cake. They're very inventive when it comes to it. Let me just weigh this. And that's four keys. Each key approximately is running about 28 to 30,000. Today, an undercover officer will attempt to deliver these packages. Our ultimate goal is to figure out who's going to receive it and what their involvement is. Did you make any purchases that you're bringing back today? OK. You didn't buy anything, no gifts, souvenirs, no postcards, nothing. Where are you guys traveling from? Milan. 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 Did you guys make any purchases of any kind? Nope. The most important thing you want to find is narcotics. But this year, it's been a very big focus on merchandise. Currently, we have Milan on the floor. That's a big flight for people who purchase a lot of items abroad and don't declare it. You bring anything back from your trip? Any purchases that you made abroad? Total value, what do you think? Oh. 150 bucks. Perfect. Have a good night, guys. When you spend a lot of money abroad, you pay a higher amount of, of duty. It's an import tax. Can I see a passport? Yes. All right, just follow me for a minute, all right? So you spent 14,000? No. I spent 20. So I'm just declaring. OK. Do you have all the receipts? I put everything in here for you. Perfect. 460 is a bracelet. 1900, that's the leather suitcase. Red OK. One. So leather luggage is 8%. So it's an 8% tax? I didn't realize it's so much. It all depends on what the item is and what it's made out of. Because the purpose of duty is to protect the economy. So if we have a, a big stake in something, oh, I got it. the tariff rate is going to be higher because we want you to buy in the United States. I got it. That makes sense. 1740 is a sweater. Sweater. I know it's an expensive sweater, but it's a really nice sweater. You oh, sometimes bad. you got to treat yourself, right? A really bad year. And so, you know what? It was. It's sometimes good to just enjoy it. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, when our show is over, you can't take any of it with you. So you might as well enjoy it while you're here. This year and live with us. And mm. that's what made me think, you know what? I'm, I'm going to enjoy myself. Exactly. I'm going to buy my sweater. I like this sweater. I agree with that 100%. My condolences. Thank you. <laughs> so when you add up all of your duty, my the grand thing total is 915. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate no it. No problem. You're all set, and thank you for declaring, all right? When we see people doing the right thing, it's kind of shocking because we're so used to people not declaring. But we want to get them out of the inspection area as fast as possible so we can get back out to the floor to get the people who aren't doing the right thing.
Let's see what else we have. Right now we're at an off-site location at Miami International Airport. Let's flip it over. We're going to be inspecting some in-transit mail. In-transit mail is mail that's entering the U.S., but it's not intended to stay here. It's going somewhere else. We pick a country and we target that country. Today, we pick the Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic, most likely, we're looking for cocaine. Let's do one bag at a time. Let's not rush it. I find it great. We don't. We let it go. Yeah, that one's good. Good to go. Okay. This is like an Easter egg hunt, you know? I don't trust this. Hey, that last one. Let's take a look. This is some type of mechanical part. Looks like a actuator pump or something. It looks weird. It has like a thickness inside. Let's pass it through again. There's something about it. It's got like a weird shade to it. I'm not sure. I, I figured we might take a chance. Let's look at it. Yeah. Set it aside. Let's see what else we have. Hit it. It's good. What is that? Yeah, let me look at that. It's a drum, some type of drum, musical instrument. This one's going to Chile. What does it look like that? There's definitely something there. I just don't know what it is. There's something wrong there. When you look at the image, it looks like there's something under this rim right here. It could be glue, it could be anything, but it doesn't look right. We're gonna take it back to the shop. So we got two parcels. We noticed some unusual densities. So we're gonna take it back to our shop, drill it, and see if there's something in there. All right, guys, thank you for being here. These two boxes right here, they were intercepted by CBP, and that's what we're delivering today. The location, it's an apartment building on the second floor. Hopefully someone's there to take the package from us. But if there's no one there, they could leave the box right outside the door and it'll be clearly visible from the parking lot. We're gonna set up surveillance, monitoring the package. If it moves, we'll follow it wherever it goes, and we'll go from there. inside the cake that's going to be delivered. There's no actual drugs in there. We went out and we purchased sheet cake and recreated the cake by hand. It was a little challenging. because I've never made a cake in my life, but I, I fought through it, and uh, we'll see if it works. <laughs> the goal is to interview the individual and see what information we can get from them as far as the supplier. Usually there's bigger fish and what we get is towards the bottom of the totem pole and we'll work our case up from there. So this is our target location. We're gonna set up right in front of the apartment to keep an eye on the packages once delivered. Best case scenario is they go into the box and retrieve the bricks. Worst case scenario, the boxes are placed outside with a return to sender.
package just arrived at target location. Oh, Nelly. The boxes are dropped off at the front door. It's like fishing. You throw the line out there. And then all of a sudden, All right, here we go. We got a guy coming up. Target is a little over six feet. He has a beard. Here we go. All right, here we go. We got a guy coming up. Male with a black T-shirt came out of our target location. He's standing there. He's looking at the boxes. He has not taken them on inside yet. He's texting on his phone right now. One package just went in. One package is inside. Second package is going. Pick it up. The second one. The second package is inside. Oh, he's out. He has both boxes with him. Looks like he's locking his door. He's walking down the stairs. He's gonna load the boxes up into his car and we'll follow him up. Has the phone with him, doesn't seem to be paying much attention to anything. He's headed out, so we're gonna see where he leads us. Good old France. You bring anything back from your trip? Did you make any purchases? I'd like t-shirts and a couple t-shirts. Total value, what do you think? 50 bucks. All right, have a good night, man. Get home safe. Hey, ma'am, see your passport? Do you have anything to declare today? Any purchases that you might have made abroad? Any gifts that you're bringing back? Yep. No. All right, just follow me real quick. All right, so these are all your bags, right? Yes, sir. Everything in yes, the bags sir. belongs to you, yes. and you have nothing to declare. Sorry, OK, you mine, made no sir. purchases. No. All right. Those are all mine. How was your trip? Good? We had a good time. It's good. Paris is the, uh, you know, passion, passion. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. Good. As you can tell, I like Chanel. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> These are all old bags or new bags? No, my stuff. All my stuff. What does that mean? Yes. Old or new? No, no, that, that means old. Okay. Oh, wow. So, listen. Okay. I asked you if you bought anything, did I not? Uh, the answer is yes. Okay. I also asked you about the Chanel, and you said it's yours. Right? Yeah, it's mine. Do you want to elaborate? Is it new? No, yes. I, yes, I bought the Chanel, yes. Yes, it's new, right? Yeah. So how come when I asked you, your response I, was no? I don't know, I just got nervous. <laughs> I just got nervous. It's a big deal. We're not talking about a couple hundred dollars. I found a receipt for $4,000 worth of stuff. So the two bags I had in my That's hands were the two bags that you bought. Yes, well, whatever that says, obviously. Technically, what's supposed to happen is about $1,000 in penalty for not declaring the stuff. Do you understand? Are you serious? Do I look like I'm joking? $1,000? You spend $4,000 that you did not declare. Sir, listen, I, listen, 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 listen. Stop talking. Let me I, let me no, stop talking. It, but it's not, like it's not, not person, but that I has nothing to do with never, it. I know, but like, listen I, to me. Stop talking. Relax. What's supposed to happen is you're supposed to pay that fine. But I'm not doing it. If you want to sit here and argue with me, yeah. I'll be more than happy well, for you to pay the penalty. So I'm absolutely not arguing. I'm just like, I'm just. Okay, upset. but you, I need you, but you should be upset at yourself for not doing it the right way. 
I gave you plenty of opportunities to say that you did buy something. You flat out lied to me, and I'm still giving you an opportunity to amend your declaration. Listen, it is what it is. I'm using my discretion because I looked at the big picture. I looked at their travel history. Leaning not much travel. So what I'm going to choose to do is just charge her to duty. It's 235. Hopefully she learned her lesson today, but we'll see. If you do this again, I can't help you. You understand? I'm not telling you you can't buy stuff, but you need to declare the stuff that you're bringing. You understand? Yes. All right. You all said you're free to go. All right. Sorry about that. No worries. That happens. Let's see what we got on the x-ray today. We're going to inspect both pieces now that we found suspect on the airfield. It's a drum going to Chile. Nothing surprises anymore. Speakers, radios, hard drives, electronic equipment, TVs, you name it, we've seen it loaded. We keep seeing a little bit of uneven thickness right here. I'm going to make a small drill hole, see if I can get a sample of what's in there. Let's see what we have. Huh? Now, why is white powder coming out of that one? I don't know if it's just the material that I drilled or if it's a narcotic. So I'm going to test it, see what happens. It's a computerized drug test kit. It has a built-in library of all the known narcotics, thousands of files. You can see the laser. No match. This one was a negative. It looks like it's resin. It smells like plastic. So all we look for is anomalies, anything that looks strange. Sometimes it pans out, sometimes it doesn't. But we keep trying. That's him, yeah. He's east on 16, about to go north on 102 Ave. Yeah, he's taking it. Purr, baby, purr. You make a right turn on Southwest 89. One lane. And lane number five. Lane five. I don't know where he went. Lost him? Worst case scenario. Yeah. He could be dropping off the boxes at the post office and just simply say it was dropped off at his house and it's not his. So I'm gonna go into the post office and see if I can figure out what he's trying to do with those boxes. So we are at the post office. I was inside with the subject. He's dropping it off, sending the package through priority mail. All right, target is out of the post office, empty hand. We are not going to follow him. The subject's just one of the middle people that's part of this organization. Stand by. Danny's going to go first. He's going for the box. We'll just hold off until we get as high as possible, and then we'll try to encounter him again at a later date. Yes, sir. OK, so we were able to recover the package, and Saul was headed to an address in Georgia. 
Now that we know the package is going to Georgia, we'll reach out to our counterparts in Atlanta. It's like an onion, a bunch of layers, and you just start peeling it. Hopefully, we can reach to whoever's up on the top of this. Do you have any foreign currency or just U.S. dollar? How much cash are you traveling with today? A couple hundred bucks. All right, good stuff. <laughs> any currency over $10,000? It's around 1000 OK. The law is you report currency over $10,000. How long are you going to be here? Three weeks. Three weeks? All right, nothing over $10,000? No. When you fail to declare that money, nine times out of 10, it's someone's personal money, and they just were afraid. But what we're looking for is any nefarious purposes. Your wife, she carry money as well or no? Yeah, I give it to her. Are you laundering money? Are you smuggling money? Is the money drug related? Is it related to human trafficking? So our job is to find it and seize it. That's what? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Colombia. Sí. Okay. Okay, man. He's coming from a source country uh, for narcotics, so we would definitely want to do an inspection on the passenger. Estas son todas tus maletas. No cargas comida, frutas, vegetales, alcohol, tobacco. No. Más diez mil dólares. No. ¿Cuánto tiempo estuviste fuera del país? Dos semanas. Haciendo qué? Bueno, yo por lo menos. Eh, vendí, vendí un carro que tenía allá. ¿Qué es esto? La plata. Sí. Le dije que le vendió el carro. ¿Cuánto tienes? Bueno, estos son 8 mil dólares. Menos de 10 mil. ¿No tienes más plata en ningún otro lugar? No. Ahorita vendiste el carro, ¿verdad? Es lo, lo que quise vender. ¿Has vendido otras cosas antes de esto? Sí, un negocio que era de la familia, un salón de belleza. Sí. ¿Tú nunca has traído más de mil dólares a Estados Unidos? Eh, en, una oportunidad, en una oportunidad se me pasó y hice ese procedimiento. Yo traía nueve mil algo, pero se vino, se, se vino un, una cantidad de, 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 de colombianos de peso colombiano, uh -huh. entonces al, al tomar eso se pasó como, como 500, 600 dólares. Ok, ya puedes guardar aquí, ok. The fact that this wasn't his first time bringing large amount of money into the United States. We're going to talk to him a little bit more. No, recoge todas tus maletas, vamos a hablar en un cuarto más privado, ok? okay. So, coge todo y sígueme, ok? I wanted to verify why he had that money on him and where that money was coming from. The backstory is these two packages were sent from the US Virgin Islands and they were intercepted in Miami. There was approximately two kilos of cocaine and cakes on top with a bunch of frosting. It's, it's pretty crazy. So today we're doing a controlled delivery. I feel confident that this is probably going to be the final destination. But we're going to deliver it and see where we go from there. All right, break. Our best case for today would be we make the delivery, the packages go inside the house, and we go ahead and search the residence, hopefully find either proceeds or more narcotics inside the house. We want to figure out how that drug trafficking operation runs. So we got our target house. There are actually some windows open up top, and we have a vehicle at home. All right, a Mercedes is in the driveway now go time, so hopefully everything goes as planned. All right, he's just pulling up now. He's opening 
the door to walk to the front. Copy. So I can see our undercover actually walking up to the house with one of the packages, packages right now. One, walk into the house with it. Deliver a package now. Okay. He made contact, uh, gave the first package, he said the name, and the guy replied yes. Second package, Second package just door. ran too. Both packages were delivered to a young. Oh, he's coming out All with right, the boxes. Front door is open. We gotta move. Both boxes are going to the Mercedes. Definitely getting movement on the packages. Came right out of the house, put them in the car, and is on the move. All right, he's out the driveway. And moving pretty quick. We'll follow to see what we come up with. Detected anything, or if he's just driving crazy? Just see where he goes, but he's driving like a maniac. Aquí cuánto tienes? One hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. Solita más el total. 8,389. Bueno. So the subject was traveling with about uh, $8,400. OK, no más tú, ¿cuántas todo el dinero? They are allowed to bring up to $10,000 without actually declaring it. Toma asiento, OK? But in this case, we wanted to verify where that money was coming from. ¿Qué vendiste ahorita? Un carro. ¿Qué tipo de carro? Una Toyota. ¿De qué año? 15. ¿Y lo vendiste por qué? Bueno, en realmente pues, el año no ha sido muy bueno. Tengo un negocio pequeño en Florida de accesorios, iPhones, cosas así. Pero me robaron. ¿En Florida? En Florida. Ok. ¿Cuándo te robaron a ti? El primero de noviembre. ¿Y qué robaron? Me robaron el... ¿Cuántos teléfonos? 31. ¿31 iPhone? ¿De qué, qué, qué iPhones? 11. 11. 11. Todos Pro Max. ¿Cómo cuánto es eso en plata que perdiste ahí? Mm, casi 50. ¿50 mil? 50, por eso fue el investigador. Hay un investigador asignado a eso. Pues yo hice el reporte con la policía. Ok, so este negocio no te está yendo muy bien. No. Entonces tenías que regresar a Colombia a tratar de vender el carro, ¿verdad? Sí. Ok. Ok, ya puedes empacar todo y ya podemos salir, ok? Te deseo buena suerte, ok? We had just make sure that his story made sense and the fact that his behavior was consistent and calm and based on the fact that he did say that they did file a police report on the items that were stolen, that to me seemed very legitimate. So it was uh, let go. Dominican Republic to Brussels. When we checked it in the field on the mobile x-ray machine, it looks like it had some density inside this tube right here. I have no clue what this is, you know? But 
we do know a little bit about mechanics and stuff like that, and we look for things that don't add up to us. And anytime we see a hollow cylinder, that doesn't look good to us, because that's where you're going to hide stuff. I'm going to run it through this X-ray now. So we're going to try to find out if that's something that's supposed to be there or if it's not. It's got some weird density. You can see little gaps. This looks like something that would be going in and out. But when you look at it, the rod doesn't go all the way through. It's like a fake tip. Now comes the fun part. We got to figure out how to take it apart. But this is not, right, this, this is hollow. hollow. Okay, we can cut the cap off. Yeah. Easy. There we go. to the rim. There we go. Right there. I think we got coke, bro. <laughs> That's not supposed to be inside a metal cylinder. Take a sample. Cocaine hydrochloride. OK. <laughs> Like little kids, we're happy. We play a game of hide and seek all day long. It's fun when we find something. We're gonna try now to take the narcotics out to try to get an accurate weight. And we'll just push it through. Another bird. The reason we were having a hard time with the x-ray is they were smart. It's an aluminum tube. We should be able to see an aluminum tube pretty good. But they were smart. They lined it with lead. What protects you from x-rays? Pure lead. So they decided to basically line the billet aluminum with this lead piece to try to like make it seem like if it's just a, a regular piece of aluminum to prevent us from looking inside. But my friend over here is smarter than the average bear. He's been doing this for a while. So yeah, we went fishing. We got a fish today. <laughs> They're good at what they do. Today, we were better. The price of cocaine getting into Europe, it's about triple the price of what it is in Miami. So that just makes the seizure so much more relevant just because we know we made a dent today into their profits. But the important thing is, it's not getting on the streets. So it's all that matters. How much? Maybe eight on the five, eight on the five hundred. Eight thousand five hundred. Career about to be here. How you doing? Any currency over ten thousand dollars? You just step down here for me. All right, so I'm going to just take a look at your carry-on. Any checks, traveler's checks? No, no. I stopped the passenger off the South Korea flight from Seoul, which is a source flight for undeclared currency. I asked 
how much he was traveling with, and he declared $350. All right, I'm just gonna take a quick look at some of your bags, all right? What are these? Are they a traveler's check? This one? Yeah, what is it? Cashier's check. Cashier's check. The eight cashier's checks total 160 million Korean won, which when you convert it to US dollars, it's $136,082. So that's a big discrepancy from the $350 declared to me initially. When it comes to undeclared currency, you're talking about money laundering and possibly tax evasion. OK, I, I make mistake, OK? I, I keep uh, that wallet, you know, so I forgot. OK. Mm -hmm. So you didn't tell me about them because you forgot about them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't that you didn't? Yeah, all the time I keep here, so I don't know. It's hard to believe that an amount of money at that level, you don't know it's in your pocket. What are you going to do with this? This is bank. Bank will get on to check. So you're going to take this directly to the bank and put it in the bank deposit? Yeah. Okay. When you get here, you're going to do it here? No, 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 no. I'm not using it here. But why are you seeing uh, this, this money in America? This one is my money, right? Yeah, my money. But... So how long have you had this? Yeah, two, three years. So you just have $150,000 in your wallet at all times. When you fail to declare it, over 100,000, there's something up about it. All right, let's go do a pat down real quick. Take this with you. We're going to go into the room. Have a seat for a minute. Yeah. So he did a maneuver, which we call a heat check. He pulled into this apartment complex and then abruptly started flying down the road which is a maneuver trying to detect law enforcement. Y'all can roll up this way. Stop him or... Yeah. Rather him get spooked and maybe kill somebody on the road. I have a feeling he is going to bail out and run. You feel comfortable to pull it now? You're probably going to get him stopped here just a second. He's stopped. He's out of the car. Take the boxes out. The boxes are out of the car right now, and it looks like he's taking them towards another house. Turn on the lights. So we didn't even plan for this. So we didn't even plan for this. He had the box and he was out of the car. I think he was going to drop it in his vehicle down there. Saw me yeah. go back in the car, the haul ass, and then um, okay. Roy stopped him right here. He's in custody right now. Our guys all did a great job in stopping him from getting out on the main roads. We're just doing an inventory of the car. The cake is sitting here. So obviously, he got into it and saw what was in here. Hey, can I get somebody to run a handgun? He did have a loaded gun. It's a Glock 17 9 millimeter. That was another threat to us. So it's good that we went ahead and took him down when we did. It's still a work in motion. Now we're going to go back and search the residence. We did a pat down. The pat down was negative. Who, who did you say is coming? 
Okay, I'm the female officer. Right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so she speaks and reads Korean, so she'll get a better read on everything. Okay, great. Right. 왜냐하면 모실 때다 하지 않았어. 다 말을 쓰면 안 해주셔서 그게 법에 적응하는 것이었어요. 너무 크다고 해서. We have an officer who is of Korean descent, and she's currently interviewing the subject to understand why he didn't declare the money, purpose of the money, and whether he's telling the truth or not. He started telling me that he's been doing business for 30 years, he had to pay his taxes. He wasn't even aware that it was in there because he had it for so long. And I started thinking this guy is... And this is just a misunderstanding. You said that you forgot it was in there. I don't know how true that is, but being that you failed to declare the money when you came into the country, you violated the law. It's over $100,000. It's a lot for us to overlook. So we're going to seize the money today, but you'll have the opportunity to get the money back at a later date. You have to prove where the money comes from, what account the money is in, and there was no nefarious purposes. You can get all of it back, or you may not get any of it back. It depends on how you plead your case. Okay? You understand? Okay. Good. So it's saying that a total of $136,082 in cashier's checks was found today. The small amount that you declared to me, that all stays with you. It's just the checks we're taking, OK? This currency seizure is one of, if not the biggest currency seizures inbound that we've had this year. There was no info that we had prior about this individual. It was a complete cold stop. So it was a great, great job by the team as a whole. And it makes us more motivated to go out the next day to keep working hard. Thank you. OK. Just make sure next time you declare your money, okay? All right. We found some electronics, some paperwork, and then found a large quantity of US currency. I think there were four of them that were labeled 5K for $5,000. This was very successful. Had a lot of working parts, but the team worked well together. With all the evidence we gathered here, we're going to be in contact with Miami HSI to see what connection there is between this guy and the guy that actually picked up the package in Miami. Even though it may seem small that we just took down one target, it's really huge in a large scope of dealing with drug trafficking organizations. Mm -hmm. 